The following program is brought to you by Caltech. So Hawaii is a terrible place to have telescopes because we have to fly all the way from Los Angeles to here and then we have to stop by the beach before to go mountain. It's terrible. I feel terrible having to One of the other nice things about coming to Hawaii is that it is a lot like some of the places we see in the solar system. This is basalt. If you remember, basalt is one of the main components on the surface of Mars, and it's the thing that comes out of volcanoes. The Hawaiian Islands are huge volcanic islands, and this is a lot like some of the places on Mars. And now we're heading up the mountain to go to the telescopes. From the shore, we drive up to near the summit of Mauna Kea. The, we don't actually go all the way to the 14,000 foot summit of Mauna Kea tonight. We stay at the astronomer's headquarters called the Hali Pahaku. Hali Pahaku is Hawaiian for House of Stone. And we stay there to acclimate for one night before we go up to 14,000 feet. It's only about an hour drive from the shoreline and the beautiful views that you can see over here um, up to that 9,000 foot Hali Pahaku where we will see instead cinder cones and lava flows and uh, perhaps even some snow this time of the year. So it's, a, it's a quite a quick transition that we're going through right now. Up there in the clouds is the summit of Mauna Kea. I say in the clouds, but it's really well above the clouds. From the summit, you can look down on the, the cloud deck below and we'll have nice clear skies up there. In the foreground, you can see uh, some of these cinder cones that are dotting the side of this volcano. It's, it's no longer a majorly active volcano, um, but it certainly was once and it certainly will be again at some point. Here we are, we're heading up the final road up to Halipahaku. We're sort of driving off what looks like perhaps the edge of the world here. You can hear the car grinding its way up the very steep slope. And uh, if you look over here in this direction, you can see the volcanic top of the mountain. All of that is basalt and cinder and ash. And eventually we'll see the telescopes peeking out up there, but not till tomorrow and we're heading up to the summit. Here we are at the astronomer's base camp, Hali Pahaku, 9,000 feet, big speed bumps. And uh, this is as far as we'll be going tonight. We'll have dinner here, get some sleep, try to stay up late, sleep late tomorrow morning, and then head up to the telescopes tomorrow. This is what the dorm rooms that the astronomers stay in look like. Pretty exciting, isn't it? Okay, so we don't stay up here because it's a nice resort to stay in. We stay up here because it's the only place to stay up here. The view outside the window, though, you can at least see where we're heading tomorrow. Up the hill to the summit where all the telescopes are. And over here is the main building where all the meals are served. I'm whispering because astronomers are asleep day and night, and you're never sure who's going to be awake or asleep in the room right next to you. So you just always get used to whispering, whatever time of day it is. It's a lot colder up here than it is down at sea level, but it's beautiful. We're here on the slopes of the volcanic summit. You can see in the distance Mauna Loa, the other big volcanic summit on the big island of Hawaii, and you can see all of these red cinder cones hitting the landscape. The clouds that we drove through on the way up are well below us now and it looks like it's going to be a beautifully clear night for observing tonight. summit of Mauna Kea. There are telescopes all around the place. The Subaru telescope is what we're going to be using tonight and there are a series of telescopes on the ridge. The Gemini telescope, Keck telescopes, 
or over in here. It's a spectacular place to do astronomy. It's 14,000 feet. We're above a lot of the Earth's atmosphere. We're above a lot of the clouds. It's dry, it's clear, it's a beautiful night. We're gonna discover hundreds and hundreds of new objects in the outer solar system tonight. Sun goes down, we open up the telescope, and it's a spectacular view from, from inside the telescope, looking out the slit. Um, but that's not where we are. We're here inside the control room all night, and it's actually much less exciting than it might seem. We got a lot of fantastic data at the telescope last night, and uh, it's a quick trip. We're heading back to Pasadena, California now, and uh, it'll take us a couple months of data analysis to figure out what we really have, but I'm excited to see what's there. Back in my office now, uh, a single night on the Subaru telescope is going to keep me busy here at my computer for a while. What we're looking for in these data are these very distant objects in the solar system. The way we find them is we're looking for the things that move. I have on my screen here an image of, well, this is about 0.01% of the data that we looked at. It's a tiny fraction of the sky, even though it's filling almost two screens here. And it's, it's beautiful. Just in a little screen like this, you see uh, a spectacular little galaxy here. Uh, there's a nice spiral that we see edge on cluster of galaxies over here. These things are stars. There's so much light coming here that the light bleeds down the, uh, the digital detector. And what we're looking for, we take a picture of the sky, we take a second picture of the sky, here's the second picture of the sky, and we look for the thing that moved. Did you see anything move? Uh, well, there are a lot of things that you see that move really quickly when you look. You see these little streaks. These are just cosmic rays that hit the detector. There is one thing that you see move. This is actually a satellite. Uh, that comes into the frame in this one frame, and in the next frame it's long gone. But uh, just by eye, I haven't found anything in these data yet, in this 1.01% of the data yet. But the computer will, will help analyze, we'll find all the little moving things in there, find all of these very most distant objects in the solar system, and use this one night of data to really continue to help understand these most profound questions we can ask here, using these smallest bodies to answer the biggest questions.